bananas. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Deadly Premonition, the director's cut. You know, something I was just thinking about was... I was talking last time about how the framing of this game is what appears to be York telling a little girl a story. Assuming he's telling the story about himself, portraying it like it's real. So what was it exactly that he said about what it is we saw last time? Oh, hey, here's a map of Greenville. You know, I don't think I ever noticed that there was a map hanging there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think I noticed that before. All right. Just giving us a little description of what we can expect in the town. So, what was described when York was describing what happened last time as he was telling the story? Did he say... Oh, after I crashed my car, I was attacked by a horde of undead ghouls who were trying to shove their hands in my mouth. I shot them all with my gun, and they melted into the ground. Grandpa, did, did that really happen? Oh, absolutely. I remember it like it was yesterday. And then the deputy of the local police department greeted me, wearing her cat girl costume. You'd think it's a little hard to believe. But I mean, the, the g little girl, I don't think we heard her name. The little girl is young, so I guess she is, she will believe a lot. Though maybe it's not really a good idea to indicate to the little girl that uh, monsters are real. Let's check out what the weather's like. No, we, now this is a, of interest to us. No, we want to know about the weather. There we go. Fine, clear day. A perfect day to have a walk. Pretty sure the first day of the game is always fine and clear. I don't think there's a, ever a problem. Yeah, get that egg. Nice microwaved egg. How, how do you like your eggs? Of course you like a microwaved. And of course you like sweet candy. And purple cola. I don't know if we can really get a good view of anything else here. It's like Lucky Charms, but it's really low res. Yeah, Lucky Charms tricks Cocoa Puffs. I can see it. It's like all three in one box. But of course, the most high, the highest resolution texture we're going to see around here is this photo. Just sitting out. Here for the whole game, just in case you walk by and you notice it. You probably won't, but it's there. That's kind of a neat thing. Alright, so what are we doing? Well, of course, we are going to go talk to Polly. Oh, actually, there is something here we can look at, I think. Yeah, from the president to rock superstars, and my favorite cartoon director... All these people stayed in the hotel. You can see them. You can make them out right there. And that text, I mean, I don't need to read out that text to you. You can read what that text says. So many people that we know. Plenty of famous people all stayed here. There are so many rooms we could check out, if we so chose. And there's, like, nothing in any of it. It's like, they explain, they like give a story-related reason for why there's nothing here. But there's so many rooms, there's a, you know, not only the bathroom, but as other hotel rooms as well. And there's only one other person who stays here at the hotel, but he's not here yet. We'll see him later on. I guess we can't actually go into every room. There are some we can. Not really a reason to do that, though. Unless you just really want to explore everything. Like, this room is not quite as nice as our VIP room. But I did find some crackers. One cracker. My, the complimentary single cracker that, M, that, uh, that Polly will leave for the guests. And if we wanted to, we could just keep looking around. But what we what we actually want to do is just talk to Polly. Got to get this investigation moving. 
Let's not forget our overpriced vending machine snacks and our sparkling soda. Unfortunately, there's no DLC costume for Polly. Good morning, Mr. Morgan. Your breakfast is ready for you. I was hoping she would have a cat suit. But she does not. Thank you, Mrs. Polly Oxford. Just Polly is fine. Well then, thank you, Polly. I'm starving. Okay, roll up these sleeves. You're gonna get elbow deep in something. We'll just leave that to your imagination. Is everything all right, Mr. Morgan? This is a lengthy conversation, as we know. We could cut it short if we did not admire. Yes, it's delicious, Polly. But of course we're going to admire. Compliments to the chef. I'm hoping my cooking will bring back repeat guests. Honestly, though, it's been a while since anyone has stayed here. I couldn't help but notice. Aside from you and me, there seems to be no other guests or workers around. Eh, yeah, see, in-game explanation for why we're the only uh, we're the only two people in this hotel. I was wondering if there were any other guests or workers here. Oh no, no one else. My husband and I used to run this place, but he's in heaven now. You've been working here alone since then. Must be hard by yourself. Oh my. We're all out of pepper. I'm very sorry. It must be difficult to run a hotel by yourself. So, well, yes. Just I want to mention that this cutscene was the first thing attention. that I had well, ever I seen of Deadly Premonition. Running a hotel is kind of like a hobby. This video was posted on, I think, nice. Destructoid. Polly, it might help to hear you better if you could sit a little closer. And of course, upon seeing the video, I knew I had to buy the game. You're embarrassing me. It was, you know, obviously I had to. Day two. I think I'm a little too old for you. Actually, not just the game, but uh, I did buy an Xbox 360 and the game just based on this cutscene. But I'm fine over here, Polly. Because I knew that I would want to play whatever this is. From all the way over there. You're exaggerating. This is fine. It won't do to be all clumped together with such a large table and cafeteria. We have to make use of all this space. <sighs> now tell me, that wound on your face, what happened? Let's just say I had some trouble during the last case I was working on. I'm sure it'll heal. It's just a flesh wound. Oh my, well, there's no need to be the tough guy here. I want you to be able to... The first heal. mention in the game of someone thinking York is downplaying his scar. Really? I feel honored. Again, something that will come up later on. It's not the first time that'll be mentioned. Zach, the lady is offering to help. Do you want to ask her about the town? And of course, once again, we can decline, but or we can say, yeah, good idea. Say, Polly, what can you tell me about this town? Well, let me see. You might know this already, but the town is called Greenvale. It rains here quite often. York is in flavor country. You know, a thing that I think... With nature, it was a, a question a lot of people have is... Is the music drowning Polly out intentional here? When he starts smoking and the music just drowns her out? This hotel was built back then. I don't... Th I don't think it is? That's I see. why this place is so big. Story explanation for why the place is so big, but there's no one here. They built that into the story. The community center is quite famous, too. The clock? Oh, yes, it's lovely. It rings in the morning and at night. And yeah, it's really hard to tell in this game time. You'll hear it many what times is intentional and what just sound. didn't and come out quite right, such as the audio mixing. Then. Anything else you'd like to know about? I'm still not really sure. Yeah, tell us about the shops. Yes, actually, Polly. Could you tell me about the shops around here? Shops? Well, there aren't many. It is a small town, after all. You can do most of your shopping at the Milk Barn convenience store. The couple who run it are a unique pair. I'm sure you'll get to like them. I will push many boxes for them. They might be open even if my kitchen is closed. If you want to go to a bar, there are two. The Galaxy of Terror and the Sweary 65. 
I don't care much for either of them. Bars are for the younger folk. We also have a gas stand, of course, the art gallery, and even a gunsmith. You should be able to find what you need. Thank you, Polly. Well, Mr. Morgan, I'd better start cleaning up. You just take it easy. I'll bring your coffee out in a moment. Thank you, Polly. I don't know why the game is pausing like that. I don't think that happens every time, but it's happening now. You have, please. I understand. I'll be right back with it. As we have seen, the director's cut is even more janky than the original version. And that's an accomplishment, really. Let's pour the milk, even though the milk is already in the coffee. Now, I can just simply refuse to look with interest, but York will just sit here forever, I think. He, he will not actually just drink the coffee. He's not here to actually drink this. He is here to get his fortune told by the coffee, in a way that only coffee can tell your fortune. So, okay, here's the big spoiler of the game. Did you see that, Zack? Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. In. The coffee. I knew I could count on it. it. Never fails. Now then, let's get going. I just tell you right off the bat, even if you don't know what it means yet. Granted, York himself forgets to heed the coffee now, doesn't he? Yes, he does. It never fails. He should have remembered that. I also like the complete lack of explanation of Agent Honor. It's like these spinning metals that appear in the world. You grab them and the FBI gives you money. Oh, right, that's... Oh, yeah, I forgot. We can get our fortune told. I still don't know what lucky items are supposed to be. I don't think it's anything. It's always trouble heading my way in this job. But I'm always up for a little excitement, too. That's enough for right now. Of course, the fortune telling did come back uh, in D4 with uh, the cookies. Those were more random. The coffee fortunes will always be in the same order, I think. If I remember that right, it's been a while. Yeah, York loves his junk food. Frame rate just changing as I spin the camera around. Yep, it's real smooth. Then not so much. Oh, hi. Of course, we could never have expected everything to be voice acted. That would have been a lot of voice acting. This isn't Shenmue, mind you. This isn't a game where, like, the voice acting is, like, three times the size of the game. I don't know if that's true. I'm just, I'm just guessing that. But, of course, Shenmue had a ridiculous uh, amount of voice acting. And, of course, we have our prices of fourteen forty-five for a lollipop. Five lollipops, I'm sorry. $19.56 for four crackers, $19.50 for one donut, $22.50 for a wedge of cheddar cheese, even though that is clearly Swiss. $119 for a worm. Considering how much nature is in this town, I'm sure we would be able to just find a worm in the dirt. That shouldn't be a problem. Well, we're starting off here with $1130, $1,130, so what am I going to use it on? I kind of don't remember at this point what I would use this on. But what I do know is that we're about to end this chapter. Actually, that's not a chapter end, is it? It's 
a what do they call it? like a sub chapter? Oh, we're on episode. Okay, no, episode one oh one, first day of investigation. So chapter one of episode one is what we have completed. I guess is what we will call it. Each episode has multiple chapters, except chapter chapter zero, which was the prologue in the forest. That was only one. I like how some of the, like some of the most work they did on this director's cut was redraw all of the items that appear in the loading screens. It was like unnecessary. Like on the list of things they there was to do, that was kind of on the low end, but a police car. So, we have King George to thank for preparing a car for me. A pleasant surprise, eh, Zach? You ready for some of the first worst Take frame rate of the game? It's about... not qu Okay, just a little bit more. Just one particular thing in particular. I have to tell you, Zach, this place simply amazes me. The keys were left on the front hood, and nobody stole the car. Values. This town has what the country needs. Values. Let's head over to the sheriff's department. I think it's actually right after this. Yeah, there it is. Look at that master key. It's like a slideshow. It's the only one that does that. Everything else seems fine. I don't <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, we're getting out of the car. That didn't happen on the original game, mind you. Zach, is there something here that you want to check out? We're supposed to go through Anna Graham's file at the sheriff's office, but if you want to act on a hunch, then I'm with you. The frame rate on those items was fine in the original. There is one thing I want to do. I don't want to take the police car, because we have something. We have a DLC item. We have the golden flare. Now... This has the same description as a normal flare, which is you use the flare and a patrol car comes. This is different. This summons whatever DLC vehicle we have selected. This is how they fit the DLC cars in the game. Yeah, there it is. Let's have a look at that. That's right. We're getting all anime in Greenvale. Okay, it appears to be a normal cop car. What does that say? Um, the, the, the department... And it says racing over here. Ra racing Greenvale Racing Department, I, I guess is what it says. And that does seem to be Emily on, on the hood. I wonder who the artist is. I don't remember seeing an artist in Greenvale. Uh, let's see. License plate says X1 Tasha. Can't think of what that would mean. And we have a blushing raincoat killer on the back. Well, let's get in. I don't know if this is any different from the normal cop car. So, can I move my head around? Hold on. I can change the camera, turn on the lights, blinker, of course it's necessary, turn on the wipers, turn that on. I don't know if I can... I don't know if I can move my head. With a normal controller, you could move your head around and look in, look around in the car. I don't know if that's possible here. We'll just keep it on the third-person view so we can actually see this. I'm, I'm going to have to remember how to drive again. It's been a while. So, 
about those bonus features in DVDs nowadays? You know, the ones from the 80s have almost no bonus material. Even if they do, it's a trailer and the visual quality is pretty bad. Well, that visual quality is a good reminder of those days. So many new audio and visual appliances were coming out back then. Do you remember the first video deck we bought? We bought it to record one of the Star Wars movies on TV. And remember when that video store opened, we spent hours there good movie to rent. There weren't that many to choose from back then. I remember renting some really bad ones after reading those back cover taglines. Hey, remember? Attack of the Killer Tomatoes? Filmed in 1978. Produced, directed, written, and edited by John DiBello. It was really awful, but for some reason I still remember it pretty well. It had so many sequels and originals that were re-released in 95. The 87-minute long theatrical bumped up to a whopping 90 minutes. That was around the time of the year. I never have a chance to see it. I know, Zach. Once this case is over, we can watch it together. I bet we can buy a copy on the internet pretty easily. Turns out you can buy a copy on the internet pretty easily. That was one of the movies I did a review of back when I did the original LP. And yeah, it wasn't difficult to find a DVD out for sale for Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. It's not exactly uh, a tough movie to find. Here's the police station. Do we want to go here? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Of course, there are many options of what we could do. We could go straight there, because that's what our objective is. Hold on. Uh, A&G Diner. Okay, so both um, Olivia and Nick are there. Anna's house. So Sally isn't there. If she's not there, that has to mean that she is with Richard. That's the gas station. Yeah, oh, no, Milk Barn. Okay, both are at the Milk Barn. Uh, okay, yeah, here's Richard, and that would be Sally with, uh, with him. This would be Quint. So we can't do the Sally thing yet, um, because she's not home. Nick's house, he's not there, of course. This would be Brian's house. Oh, the pink house here. That's the DLC house. Why don't we see if I can go there? You like this frame rate? It's pretty good. I'm gonna drive across the lawn, because it's my lawn. I bought the DLC house. I can drive on it if I want. There's like a car there's cars here parked on the lawn. I can't drive these cars, I don't think. Oh, uh, on the roof of the car, it says I see you. Hold on, let's can we get a better look at that? Kind uh not r not really, but you can see it. It says I see you. I don't think I can drive the... Yeah, I can't take these cars. These are not drivable. Even though, technically, they're on my property. I bought this house. The house... I believe this house is in the original game. It's just that... It's just a normal house. You can't go in it. And, uh... Can I still not go in it? Alright. It's not letting me go in the house. Even though I own the house. Is it too early in the game to go into the DLC house? Uh, maybe. It's not like there's really anything special inside. Alright, do we want to go to the police station? Because that would take us on a track to then go to the hospital. Do we want to do that? I, you know, what I probably want to do... That's where we started. What I probably want to do is go to the milk barn and do the box pushing. I would want to do that, like start doing that as soon as I can. Because the earlier, you know, the, fa the sooner I start the box pushing, the sooner I'm actually going to um, be able to get our favorite guitar. So both people are there. I am going to try to get over there. Hopefully I can get there in time. Just 
pushing all the buttons because I'm trying to get used to these controls. Um, okay, so a problem I can imagine I'm going to have is I don't remember the geography very well anymore. Okay, so I want to head that way. Like, I used to, like, basically know this town like the back of my hand, but it's been a while. Oh, yeah, I also need to... There's, like, a... Oh, there's a trading card here. I should probably pick that up. We're at the Antiquaria Bookshop. Now, is it on the other side of that wall? Yeah, probably. All right, well, let's just keep going. Speaking of 80s movies, one jewel in the rough springs to mind. Deadly Spawn. Do you remember that one, Zach? Sure do. Back in 83, directed by Douglas McKenna. Right, it was filmed pretty cheap, but still, it was pretty good. The monster design with the mouth crammed full of teeth, I loved it. So many delicious B-movie cliches. Did you know that they made a sequel? But I never got to see the sequel. The rental store didn't have it for some reason. They said the staff for the sequel was totally different from the original. I wonder how the sequel turned out. You know, the monster in that one responded to sound. Wait, Zach. Sounds a lot like the movie Tremors. That one was back in 89, directed by Ron Underwood. Uh oh. Great this is a start, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> Masterpiece. Zach, that oh no, I'm go I'm going the right crazy. way. There was a fourth one. I've only seen the first one though. Yeah, I've, did, I have not seen the the sequel. I saw Deadly Spawn. That was one again one of the movies that I did for the original LP. But uh, I have not seen Deadly Spawn too. York does not sound like he has a high opinion of the movie, though. Why is, like, the evil music playing? You hear that? That's, like, the music that plays after the... Oh, maybe because it's the car? Does this... Is that the... Maybe that's the car's theme song. Because different cars had different theme songs, right? So I guess that's the one for this car. I just noticed that we didn't have our usual FBI agent music playing. But maybe it's because of the car. Alright, here we are at our favorite convenience store. The, the only convenience store. Hello? I'm trying- I'd like to- the, Hello? Yes? Sus suspect. FBI. So, you're the talk of the town. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. That's what everyone always calls me. The name's Keith. A pleasure meeting you, York. Sure is a big scar. It's bigger than I thought it would be. So, Keith... It's the second mention of the scar. Have questions about the incident. Huh? Sure, fire away, man. Did you know Anna Graham? Yeah, of course, man. Poor little Anna. She was such a nice girl. I mean, what kind of sicko would do that to her? Well, I'm here to catch that sicko. Listen, even the smallest piece of information might be useful to me. If there's anything you noticed or want to let me know, contact me. Okay, will do, bro. You got my cooperation, FBI. Another thing. I'll be frequenting your store during my stay here. So I'll see you around. <laughs> sure thing, bro. We got what you need, so drop in any time. <laughs> it is kind of surprising that uh, someone who is as apparently, I mean, looking at how he's dressed and looking at it, how much he's into rock music, he seems like he would be anti-establishment, but he is down with the FBI. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. And you are? Lily Ingram. My husband owns the convenience store, and we have two sons. I like to think that I'm just a regular wife in a regular family. Aside from the point that our sons were the first witnesses to the crime scene. You seem pretty calm considering their involvement in such a big murder case. <laughs> you think so? I'm glad to hear that. Anyway, if I looked all bleak and gloomy, I think it would hurt our business. Uh... Agent Morgan, about that scar... Uh, Lily, please don't call me that. Third mention. Call me York if you can. 
People have been calling me York for a long time. You're a silly one. No, not at all. I'm just a regular special agent. <laughs> so what were you about to say, Lily? Huh? Uh, about my scar? Um, I'm sorry. I seem to have forgotten. It's because you said something silly. I see. Well, if you remember anything important, just let me know. I will. I'll probably be making use of your store during my stay here. So I'll see you from time to time. Okay, I'll see you soon then. All right, now that we've spoken with her, we should, yep, we got a side quest. Hi there. But you know, oh, oh man, look at that in the foreground. That woman is looking at whatever that is intently. She's trying to find the proper brand. Just the right side. Huh. Like, behind York and below is a gigantic box of USB cereal. It's huge. Why would you need that much cereal? Yeah, Keith only sells the things he likes. He doesn't sound like a very good sh owner of a shop. He'll forget the inventory. Lily is very considerate about Keith's feelings. She will not let him know that he is terrible at running this shop. That woman is... She is making sure she has exactly the right brand of what she's looking for. I don't know what she's looking for. But she will not quit until she finds exactly what she needs. Now, I want to talk. You always look like a busybody. Is the job working you that hard? <laughs> it's not so bad, hon. I've gotten used to it now, really. You seem to be taking it easy. Sometimes it's important to take a laid-back approach. Pressing forward too quickly can be a recipe for disaster. <laughs> You're being silly. Oh, yeah. Hun, if you have time on your hands, can I ask you a favor? Such as? Nothing major. It's just our storage room is a total mess. Keith just makes it worse every time he tries to clean it up. And I can't move the heavy boxes in there. I used to ask my father to help us out, but... Well, he's not that young anymore. Of course, I'll give you something in return. If you tidy the place up, I'll give you this. What's that? A bronze card. It's a discount card for the milk barn. You'll be able to buy things cheaper with this. I think it'll help you lower your investigation expenses. So you're saying that helping you out will ultimately help the investigation. Zach, what do you think? I don't mind if you want to help her. You know, if, if I went into a store and the owner said, could you organize my stock room? I'll give you a car that you could use to get discounts here. It would really help me. I don't know. I would feel kind of uncomfortable. Like, is this appropriate? You're just asking a customer to organize your stock? And I guess I'll do it. Thank you, hon. The storage room is this way. Okay, the first box pushing puzzle. Lily, Lily has given us part time work, tidying up the milk bar barn storeroom by pushing the boxes around. Yeah, we can only access the milk barn when the weather is nice. And we can only get this side quest from Lily. So if she's not here, we can't get the side quest. And the reason I want to get the side quest is because we do need to complete all of these in order to get our guitar. It's a good grunting sound. And of course, uh, Shenmue 2 is the all-time great when it comes to that. What happens if I observe? Yeah, okay, that's what he says. All right, that goes there. Let's see. I can, yeah, I can get that one in there. So I should push this one over here. 
Actually, you know, since I... Since I can walk around like this, maybe we should take a look at this stock. What do they got? They got... Uh, uh, they got... Huami Biscuits. Huami Food in Hong Kong and Macau. Hwa yeah, okay. That's what they got. It seems like most of the boxes is that. I guess that's their supplier. Oh, they also got boxes of moving. I don't know what... They have plenty of it, though. They have plenty of moving transportation boxes. I don't know what came in that. Uh, right. Push this one up in here. does not seem like he's too busy to do this. I don't know. Lily already marked down the squares where the crates need to go. It's not like he needs to figure something out here. Thank you, hon. You've been a big help. You're a real hero. A hero? You just can't leave those who need help alone, can you? I can tell you no, hon. You're that kind of guy. Anyway, here's your reward, hon. You've earned it. We got it, but it's not what we really need. We'll give you a discount from your next purchase. Thank you, Lily. We'd better be careful not to get carried away and overspend, Zack. Agent York, you're a good person. My father doesn't seem to appreciate you yet, but I do. And I'm sure Keith and the boys feel the same. Come by any time, okay? Well, I have not met the boys yet. And I only met Keith. And I haven't met her father yet at all. We'll meet him, but we haven't met him yet. Let me just remember, remind myself what the full inventory is that only Lily can sell us. Hi. Right, a gardening sickle, a shovel, coffee milk, coffee black, stabilizer, flare, cigarette heavy, lollipop, crackers, onion, egg, sugar donut, cheddar cheese, can of pickles, smoked salmon... Turkey sandwich, there we go. Art that $90 turkey sandwich, it's really good. Bait rod, okay, that's what we got. They're in, I think that their inventory does change uh, after a while. You know, for a second I thought that was an M. I thought that said milk barm. I thought, did I say milk barm the whole time? No, it says barn. That's an N, not an M. And you might have noticed during uh, Lily's introduction cutscene some tremendous text on this. It, if, if it is an idea of cooking, cultivation of vegetables, recommended cooking ingredients, appetite, and health, I okay anything. That might be my favorite text in the game, along with how to raise vegetables to be able to easily make. How do you do that? They know what the milk barn... Oh. Maybe they should clear that off. The higher resolution of the director's cut allows us to more clearly see the Basa Bada cer uh, cereal and the USA fruit. The USB cereal and the Mo dog food. Don't forget USA tea. What is she looking at, by the way? What's she trying to find? There's apple? What is she trying to find here? I cannot see what that is. I know that it's fresh. Fresh, fresh. Well, there's also cool drinks. But I guess that we're done with the milk barn for right now. And probably that's... We're probably done for... Oh, hold on. Let us let me get that card back there. And then we'll be done for right now. We got Grekoch, but only the card version... Not the real thing, but that is what we're working towards, and we'll get it. Keith won't know it, but we're going to get it. It's his first ever guitar. 
Well, I mean, I, it's a good thing Keith never looked at this trading card that was right next to him. Otherwise, he would have found out that it was a replica model. I don't know. I think that it's pretty sturdy, even if it is a replica. Well, that's probably it for right now. We'll just stand around in the milk barn, look at the ads for Happy Cola and Rock and Roll Night. And next time, we're going to continue on figuring out what it is we want to do as we drive through Greenvale. Just looking at the what they have on the counter here. We're going to drive through Greenvale. We're going to figure out what we want to do. Maybe Sally will come back to her house. Maybe we'll go drive around and pick up those bones. You remember the bones? We're going to need those bones at some point. I guess we might as well get them now. But I think that for right now, what I do know is that we're going to say goodbye. As that woman searches for... Searches for the right brand of, of tea. Does she want tea? Does she want America tea? Does she want uh, a mixel house? Does she want that? She's trying to decide. She will not be able to decide. We could try to help, but... Huh? The people don't really appreciate this kind of help. I'll see you next time as we continue on with Deadly Premonition, the Director's Cut. <laughs>